Welcome to Building the Future. I'm your host, Kevin Horick. You can find the show online at buildingthefutureshow.com or follow me on Twitter at Building Show. You can also find it on iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube. Welcome back. We have George Borovic. He's the CEO and co-founder of Treasure Chest Marketplace. He's a serial op- entrepreneur, advisor, mentor, and early stage capital investor. George, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Kevin. I really appreciate it and I'm humbled to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on the show. We we just connected in the last couple of weeks and I kind of bumped you up in the queue because I was pretty pumped when we first talked and I thought, man, I should get this guy on the show sooner than later. So thanks for kind of doing this. You know, I reached out to you last week saying, can we record you next week? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, totally. My pleasure, man. So, Anything that I can do. Yeah, so maybe we'll start off kind of a bit about your history and kind of where you grew up and let's start there. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, for the most part, I was born in, in uh, the former Czechoslovakia, um, and, and we escaped sort of in the early, I would say, 80s. Oh, wow. um, and yeah, yeah, and, and moved to Canada, and uh, for the most part, lived in sort of the Toronto area, um, Oakville, more or less, um, until about 13 years um, of age. And then I think I moved to this little tiny town called Napanee. Um, which is where I went to high school as well. And I think the high school is most famous for Avril Lavigne out of all people, but we'll do what we can to change it and get on the map. Um, well, yeah. you're doing that. And, yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. We'll, we'll hopefully get there. We'll shake some things up and maybe see if we can disrupt uh, some of the things that we have in mind. So, um, yeah, maybe we'll be known for that. Um mm-hmm graduated probably about a year early was sort of like okay what do I do all my friends are still in high school you know naturally you want to stick around with your friends so I ended up moving to Europe um, was in Germany the Czech Republic and then I lived in Vienna for quite a while um, and decided to go to university there um, with psychology and decided you know what it, it isn't for me and it's amazing how many entrepreneurs don't ever stick around <laughs> too long once they get into sort of the curriculum and the system and, and figure out, you know what, this might not be for me, a little too rigid, and, and I've got bigger sort of aspirations. So spent a little time in, in Vienna, Austria, um, actually on two occasions. Uh, another time I had gone back to, to Prague and Vienna for consulting work, and eventually decided to do something on my own okay so what made you kind of come back to Canada then um well for the most part I to be honest I I got kind of homesick um more than anything else it, it really it bore down to that um and I had happened to meet a girl um, um yeah, so one of those. Um, yeah, I had met a girl, and, and so the idea was sort of come back to Canada, get things sort of situated there, um, continue on consulting, and, and see how we could go back and forth between the U.S. And so she was in the U.S. and, and um, Canada. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then, so when did you start Treasure Chest Marketplace? So we started that pre- Probably we're in our almost third year, so we were building it for about two years and then launched um, in January okay. um, with Treasure Chest Marketplace. And, and I mean, essentially that that grew out of, um, so w- with my, my, she's now my ex, um, she was coming back and forth between Canada and the U.S. and, and she had stumbled upon a, a little classified site um, while we were trying to help my dad sort of fix his house, renovate it, and then sell it. Right. Um, so so we were typically going to this site. Um, it's called Kijiji. And uh, and she really liked it. She, she thought it was pretty neat. And, I mean, it's a, it's a step above, let's say, Craigslist, which is what they pro- predominantly have in the U.S. And, and she really enjoyed it and thought, you know what, I don't know why we don't have this in the U.S. And, uh, and I said, well, you know what, we can do better than that. It was, what was it, 2000? 13 essentially and I said we can do a lot better than this and uh, so I I had moved back to the US into this little place called Treasure Lake which was this really cool gated community in Dubois, Pennsylvania 
Okay. And uh, yeah, it had it was it was phenomenal. It was it had two lakes, uh, PGA golf course. Like it wasn't your typical sort of suburban area, and and the name Treasure Lake. It just it just really stuck out, and I thought, okay, you know what, I'm going to create this thing for for this community first. Okay. You know, sort of test the waters, validate, you know, if we definitely have something here. And then sort of started building it, and, and uh, over time it was like, you know what, let's do this for the state of Pennsylvania. Okay. Then, uh, yeah, yeah, so Treasure Lake became Treasure Chest, um, and then it was like, okay, well, you know what, this is going pretty well. Let's let's do it for all the U.S., um, and, and then I sort of built out this, you know, this franchise model where it's like, okay, we can do a white label where anybody can own one of our, you know, treasure chest marketplaces. Oh, okay. So yeah. were you kind of franchising them out a little bit? Is that kind of how Well, that was, that was the original idea, right? And, and sort of where, where we were heading. Um, it was an interesting concept and, and quickly we learned that you can't call it franchising because it really isn't. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, yeah, and so slowly over time, I'd shown it to uh, a couple people back in Canada, um, some business individuals in the in the Kingston, Ontario, sort of area, and uh, they got sort of excited and and were like, "Well, we think we can find you investors," and sure enough, they did, and sort of the investors lured me back to Canada and. and under the assumption, you know, if you want the money, you have to come back here. So, uh, so I did. I, I ended up moving back, um, and and sort of we ended up changing the model a little bit because it became a sort of how does David compete against a Goliath like Kijiji, which sure. is an eBay-owned company, or Craigslist, right? And Craigslist is, is huge in the U.S., but those are the two big predominant players in our game. And it's like, how do we ever compete against these guys? And, and slowly that model started to evolve as we were getting closer and closer to market. And it became the notion of, okay, well, let's, who's, who's hurting now? Um, and we figured out uh, that print and broadcast media were, were hurting the most. Newspapers, you know, we all know how they're sort of getting hammered. Right. TV, uh, even, even sort of radio stations are, are feeling an impact. Oh, for sure. Um, so we decided, okay, well, let's let's do partnerships with radio stations, TV stations, newspapers, and what we'll do is we'll do a co-branding for our platforms. Okay. And and yeah, so so we do sort of a model where it's okay based on your territory, its size, its population. We do a license agreement with that various um, newspaper, again, radio station, whatever it may be. Um, we can work with charity groups, we can work with colleges, universities, student unions, all that stuff. And uh, we give them a license agreement, and then we do a revenue share. So we do all the heavy lifting um, for them. And it introduces a new revenue stream, gets them caught up a little bit. And then it's also driving users to both of their, um, basically their portfolio. So as they sort of use our platform, they're also able to get that sort of analytics and data and be able to convert them to their existing portfolio which is a really attractive thing and and essentially it works in the sense that they already you know are trusted in the community they already have an audience oh, that's have, actually really important and interesting actually is kind of your angle right yeah yeah exactly well it's it's an important one because again we go back to that david and Goliath story it's like how do we ever compete Sure. You know, and, and so when we go and we co-brand and partner with, with these groups, you know, they're already established. They're, they're already in that community, and it gives us a leg up. Typically, they already have a marketing team. They have a sales team. Right. You know, and, and they have the medium to give that exposure. Sure, so and they, they can kind of know what their audience is looking for too, right? You got it. You got yeah, it. Yeah, that's it's actually like, super important, I think, that not a lot of people, I think, think about is – you've basically figured out how to, you know, find your little niche and move into a huge potential market, right? Oh, exactly. I mean, and, and you have to find the pain points, right? I mean, we are essentially catering to two different groups. Um, you know, we're, we're as much as we're B2B and, and doing these partnerships, we're also B2C. And, and, you know, we need to make sure that the end user, someone like yourself who, who wants to sell an item, you know, that, that there's a good incentive to do that and you know treasure chest marketplace as much as we look at it as a classifieds i mean we 
the idea is we built a social network um, built around classifieds, you know, that makes selling your items is safer and easier. Um, you have an avatar, we integrated Skype into it so I can call you and see like that, that item actually exists or if you're providing a service, I can get to know you beforehand. And with group sell, it's extremely safe in the sense that let's say, you know, Kevin, you're selling your car for $10,000. You can allocate $100, $50, $1,000 to anybody in your social network um, who can help you sell it. And it's like you toggle your social networks, you blast it out to them. And if they help you sell it, you get to reward them. Which know? is and, cool. And yeah, well, it, again, it, it, it's that idea of, of everybody shares sort of in the well. Sure. You know, and, and, and that's the whole idea behind even a social network, whether it's social wealth, whether it's, you know, monetary or anything along those lines. So. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm curious then how, how do people kind of get started if they wanted to, you know, sell an item, um, maybe, you know, website and kind of how you kind of go about doing it. Yeah, it's, it's super, super easy. I mean, we, we made it as, easy as humanly possible. So basically you would jump on the site, you can log in with your Facebook, your Google Plus, your LinkedIn, your Twitter, whatever you want, your email. Um, and what is the site that. just for the listeners? And I'll post it online as well. Sure, yeah, it's Treasure Chest Marketplace. Uh, .com? Uh, yeah, uh, it'll for the most part geolocate you. Right. Um, yeah. Um, and the only one that we're launching now, actually, so, so far we're in just Canada. Okay. Um, we have one in San Francisco. Yeah, I noticed um, that. that we sort of yeah that we sort of propped up there. We haven't done much with it. It's mostly for for sort of investors and and all that stuff to take a good look at it and strategic partnerships that we're forming, um, sort of in San Francisco and the Bay Area. Right. Um, but yeah, you can definitely take a peek at it there, or you can check out our Treasure Chest Marketplace corporate site, um, which gives a lot more detail and some videos in terms of what we do and who we partner with. Um, but yeah, sorry. No, that's awesome. Um, so I'm curious, you obviously aren't in Silicon Valley and you're running a successful company and you actually got told to move back to Canada. So I'm, I'm curious to know what it's like. Most people can't just up and leave and move to Silicon Valley for a number of reasons, you know, family, friends, sometimes they just yep. don't even want to move, right? Yep. So I'm curious yep. what it's kind of like and, you know, the pros and cons of running a startup outside of Silicon Valley. Um, without a doubt, there are advantages and disadvantages. Um, you know, Canada for the most part is notorious for being risk adverse. Um, I think things are getting better right. in terms of investment. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're lagging significantly, um, in terms of, of how that all works and, and even sort of the ecosystem and, and the startup ecosystem and the idea of community and, and it's, it's, it's a little bit behind, um, you know, if you're building a B2C company, you really need to be in Silicon Valley. Um, sure. B2B, I think, I think is a little bit easier here. Um, and hardware might be a little bit easier here. Sure. Um, why do you think yeah. hardware is easier just out of curiosity? Um, I think, well, in particular, especially in, in Ottawa, I mean, Ottawa is sort of a telecommunications hub. Um, right. you know, Nortel was here. It's, sort of the same with Kitchener Waterloo, you know, RIM was there. Um, so they've, they've got that hardware experience. A lot of the engineers, you know, are, are hardware. Um, right, of course, so right. There, 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 yeah, there's a good understanding of hardware here in, in these two cities, um, for sure. Uh, but yeah, you know what, where Canada is, is far superior, it's, it's definitely in sort of your R&D um, your talent, you know, like we have a huge talent here and the beauty of it is it's a fraction of the cost of what it would cost you in San Francisco. Sure. Even with the do- the Canadian dollar value, we're joking lately, it's like a 25% oh, discount right it, now. It is absolutely insane. And, and so, you know, f- for anybody listening, the one thing I, I definitely, definitely recommend, um, is, you know, we also have a ton of subsidy programs. You know, whether it's IRAP or, or OCE or, or any of these government subsidy programs, and they're non-dilutive. Sure. So the beauty is, you know, we were talking to, uh, we had gone to five meetings um, on a trip back in February, 
in terms of investors. And one of the most attractive things to them was to be able to say, hey, guys, you know what, we're looking for a million dollars because we're in Canada. And as long as we keep the R&D and, our, and some of our team here in Canada, we can take your million dollar investment and we can turn that into almost two point two million. Sure. Right. Well, when and shred too, it, right? You've got shred. You've got IRAP. Exactly. And I think and, there's and, one where if you are an American company investing in a Canadian startup, there's another government program. Is that? Do you know I, what I'm I, talking about? I there are so many. Oh, okay. Right? Like like I, I wish I knew offhand, but yeah, you're right. There there are those, and then not just that, but look at the conversion. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, the current the current dollar value um, is massive. So this is this is a huge incentive when when you know if again any of the listeners are out in in sort of Silicon Valley or you know these are things that you can leverage um, here on the Canadian side. Because I even have a few buddies that work. Actually, like a guy that I used to work with, he's still in Edmonton, and then I have a friend in uh, Vernon in British Columbia, and they both work for one works for a startup in actually right downtown San Francisco, and the other one works yep. for a startup in Portland. And you know, he they both commute a couple of times a year, you know, for weeks at a time. But yep, it's awesome for both parties. Yeah, well, I've got a couple of friends that do it from Vancouver. Right. Um, I've had. Like there's there's quite a few friends that are you know based sort of in Ottawa but are going back um, back and forth between San Fran and, and working for you know the likes of uh, Twitter. I just had a friend go there. He had done an interview with Get Around. Right. Another friend I just sort of hooked up with somebody at Google and Apple and Udemy and and Get Around as well. And it's like we're slowly migrating back and forth. You know, and it makes sense. It's, it's the the flight to to Silicon Valley or San Fran, you know, it's typically I think under seven hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, you know, once you start to grow your network, um, you end up meeting so many people, and and you know what, we're founders, we're startup founders, and, and it's dirty, and and can I crash on your couch? No, and you there's know? nothing wrong with that, right? I think people <laughs> glorify it a little bit, right? <laughs> Sometimes <Yeah>. it's not. <laughs> yeah, and well, it's not, you know, and, and like we're all bootstrapping, you know, we're all we're all poor. Um, it's it's not, and we have to go through that. I think that's part of the sort of uh, what can we call it? It's like a christening. For sure. Know? Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it, it's not meant to be pretty. If it was pretty, everybody would be doing it. Yeah, I know, no, for sure. And I, I think part of it is is you need to struggle a little bit and understand, you know, what you have, right, when you make it. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you got to have your little failures. Yeah. Um, oh, totally. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. Uh, again, you know, we hear all the unicorns and, and the success stories, but dig deeper and, and you're going to hear, like, how much they struggle. You know, the... the the WhatsApp guy, you know, he, he was collecting food stamps. and Really? I didn't know, know that. His, wow. Oh, it's a, it's a ridiculous story. Like, he, he was collecting food stamps, and actually his $19 billion, when, when they got acquired for $19 billion, he signed that deal in the food stamp office where he was collecting food stamps. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. Like, that's insane to me. <laughs> it's one of those stories, right? And, yeah. and we all go through it. Sure. It sort of weeds out the strong from from the weak and the entrepreneurs from the entrepreneurs. Yeah, fair enough. So yeah. I'm curious then, how often do you find yourself needing to go to Silicon Valley or San Francisco? Um, yeah, you know what? My my full intention is hopefully in the next six months to be there full time. Okay. Um, I, I I fell in love with it. Oh, it's a beautiful um, city. I, I love it too. It, it's it's the city and and like I, I in particular I love Palo Alto and Mountain View. Um, yeah, they're beautiful. I, I I fell in love with the people, you know, too, um, the mentality, the startups, uh, the founders. It, it's one of those places where it's it's just like every time we've ever gone there, we've either done something incredibly remarkable, like we met the Uber founder Michael Harrington. Okay, um, how was he? Know, Stuart, he seems uh, like a super nice guy. Uh, you know what? And and this is it. Like every single one of them. So the, the two things that always stood out every time I go and I meet somebody or a founder, or a, it's literally anybody. The first question that they always ask is, is how can I help you? Like, what do you need? Right. And, 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 and they do it. 
Like it's 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 absolutely mind boggling. You know, I talked to one guy who who was kind enough to give me his time to get a Skype call. Um, within 30 seconds of the Skype call, you know, after he had asked me, what can I do for you? And I, and I threw out a couple of things, you know, sort of any introductions to, to people sort of in my space. Within 30 seconds, he had shot out three emails. And one of those emails ended with, um, as he's doing an intro, he's saying, I would take it as a, as a personal sort of uh, gratitude and, and favor if you could talk to George. I just met this guy. Yeah, that's and, awesome. And, and the way that he positioned that, you know, and, and that is something else that is a drastic difference between, you know, the Valley and, and here in Canada. You, you definitely, we, we got to get better at that, building our community, building the ecosystem, you know, doing stuff for each other and not expecting anything back. No, totally. Um, it's, it's interesting because there's been people that I've wanted to reach out to on the show for probably a decade and I never had a reason mm-hmm. to like, what am I going to say? Right. But now that sure. I have the, the show, you know, I email them and say, I'd love to have you as a guest. And most of, I, I would say 90% of the time I heard back from them or their assistant. And yep. I always have pre-calls like I did with you. Oh, and sure. one of them, well, even a couple of them, they're trying to like sell me on why they should be on the show. And I'm kind of like, I, you're on. Like I, I'm happy. Yeah, I, I'm happy yeah. you responded to my email. Never mind, yeah. we're chatting right now. So yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. know, these guys are they've made more money than they know what to do with, and they're still trying to yeah. say like, "Will you have me on your show?" It's like you're on the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know so what? I it, love that. It's, yeah, it it and and that's our responsibility. That's part of the gig. Right? Sure. You know, and as a founder, that is. It is our responsibility, you know, if we're going to grow this ecosystem. And I mean, it's growing huge, right? Globally. Mm. Everybody, I love it. Like, I, I go to a cafe these days and I see, you know, somebody talking about their startup or somebody pitching a, a VC or an angel, you know, even here in Canada. And I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. You know, my roommate is starting two startups. It's, he took a year off from the government. And now he's starting two startups. It's really? Like, awesome. No, oh, yeah. You know, and, and I see it more and more and, and people are just, jumping into this and and you know what i've been lucky enough to have people before me you know educate me on on what i need to know and and you know what they garnered from their experience and their lessons and and now it's up to me you know and that should keep going like that and we so badly need to put emphasis on that so i can uh, I can understand. I can totally understand why they, well, you know, want to be involved in the show because it's our way of giving back. Well, yeah, and I think too, it's it's weird, a little bit weird for me now. Like I'm 32, and so I've been in the industry quite a while. Like I started when I was about 12 doing this stuff, and then I was running my own little web shop late in my teens, and then I kind of been working mm-hmm. in the industry for, you know, since I was 18, getting paid, right? Awesome. And, um, the thing is, is you have younger guys reach out to me. Like I talked to guys that were 20, 23 the other day. They wanted me on mm-hmm. their little podcast and, you know, they were like honored to have me. And it's weird because I always reached out to people, you know, growing up and saying, you know, can you help me or with this and that? And, you know, majority of them, you know, did give me the time of day and help me mm-hmm. out. And you're right. I feel like I need to do the same thing to the people that are up and coming and, and whatnot. Yep. And I love giving back. And in some ways I'm honored that they even ask. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a beautiful thing. I mean, we are it's almost like the sorority, right? Exactly. Um, we, it's it's a roller coaster ride and then to be able to talk with others and and you know who who have sacrificed everything and and gone through this, you know, this lifestyle and and it, it's 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 kind of fun to trade those more stories, right? Exactly. So, I'm curious, you're also a mentor and an advisor what do you kind of look for in an entrepreneur when you're mentoring or, you know, advising people? Yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> definitely, I, I think the most critical thing is, is you know, entrepreneurs or, or founders who can listen, um, who, who are willing to listen. Um, you know, I, I, it, was, it was the same thing with me. Um, it, it took me a little while, actually. I was pretty stubborn thinking I knew everything. Um, but then it sort of clicked after, you know, a few months, I understood like, you know what, I I need to listen to these people. Um, so finding someone who, who can just sit there and absorb what you're trying to say, um, is critical. It, it, it doesn't necessarily matter what they're doing. 
but if they're receptive to the idea of listening and and just sponges, right? I, mm-hmm. I think that's so critical because you know in, when I, when I do mentoring and advising, I, I don't advising. I don't even like that word um, because I it's not up to me to tell somebody what to do. Oh, that's a good point. Um, yeah, well, typically, I mean, I you know, I may not be in that space. Right. Um, and, and so I don't have the full understanding of that. But here's what I can share with you. I can share with you my experience. You know, what we did at that stage in our growth, what we did at that point. Did we do that deal? Did we mix that deal? Was it worth it to us? You know, and, and talk about you're here. I was once there. This is how we got through it or, or didn't get through it or this is what we had to do to get through it. And, and those sponges will take that in. Right. You know, well, because their um, friends and family just kind of don't understand what they're really going uh, through. Like they're supportive, but oh, it's hard yeah. to give advice on something that, especially if they're not technical, they don't really understand what you're even talking about sometimes, I find. Do you find that as well? Oh, oh, oh absolutely. I mean, you know what? I, I, I remember early on, you know, I was sort of involved with a couple incubators, accelerators and all that stuff. And I mean, some of the, some of the time it was like getting advice from a guy who sold a you know, was a shoe salesman and sold a shoe business back in the eighties, giving me advice on a high tech company. And it's like, everybody's sort of got an opinion. It's very easy to have an opinion. Sure. Um, it's very easy to come in and, and start tearing stuff up and saying, you're doing this wrong. You're doing that wrong. You should be doing this. Well, you know what? It, it, it's not a cookie cutter and, and you can't go in, uh, you know, and I can't have a shoe salesman telling me what I should be doing with with a high tech company. Yeah, that's valid. You know, and, and 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 that goes for me too, you know. I, I I'm not a shoe salesman, but my my industry, you know, that I understood and know extremely well was, was the classifieds, you know, uh the e commerce side, S commerce, all that stuff. That's where that's where the B two C stuff, you know, and some of that is relevant, but talking and experience is, is so much more crucial. And yeah, it, it you're, you're going to get advice from everywhere on what to do. Uh, you know, it's one of those things. I always tell people, institute the week long rule. Before you make any decisions, take a week. Really? That's you actually know? really good uh, advice. Well, it's it's something I learned, you know, and, and that was from somebody, you know, where where I was in an incubator accelerator. They were probably a year ahead of us. And, and I mean, they almost lost the company signing a deal. Really? Um Oh, absolutely. And and ever since then, you know, they instituted this week long rule where it's like we are not gonna sign anything, we're not gonna make any decisions until we've given it a week to talk through, you know, and, and to, to dwell on it and, and you know, you can't do that for every single case. Right. But ninety nine percent of them you can. And and that's that's one of those things, you know, that's a that's a tidbit of advice that could save your company. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Do you have any other advice for aspiring entrepreneurs? Kind of either what to do or not to do? Um, you know, I, I'm a huge sort of uh, proponent for for solo co-founders. I, I'm not crazy. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Actually, yeah. I'm curious to know why you say that. Uh, because it's incredibly difficult. Um, it's incredibly difficult when you're starting out a startup and, and you know what, you will, <laughs> I keep saying this, it's like I used to be a good looking guy, you know, and, 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 but this startup life and, and all these hats and, and all the time it takes for a single co-founder, when you're first starting out, um, you know, you are building every single aspect of that company on your own and you're doing the marketing, you're doing the strategic partnerships, you're doing the, you know, social media side sales, um, your HR, your, your everything. Right. And and to be honest, I don't see an advantage to that. And again, there are disadvantages and, and advantages. You know, co founders can fight, but and it's my belief that there is your equal out there and someone who can offset your weaknesses. You know, I have plenty of weaknesses and, and for me to have been able to find a co founder from day one who shared that passion, uh, that would have saved probably almost a year of oh, okay. building and, and, and all that stuff. Yeah, it's incredibly difficult as a first-time founder, let's say. Right. Maybe on your second go-around, you know, um, 
especially if you exit and all that stuff, that's fine. That's a whole other ball game. But in the early days, uh, two heads are better than one, for sure. In 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 my opinion, right? Sure. I think it's also tricky. To, like if you have an idea and you're passionate about it and you're convinced that it's going to go and you can't find somebody, I feel like you should just go for it anyway. Like why would you hold off trying to find somebody? Because you could sure. spend eternity and never find yeah. somebody. So yeah. I never really understood where a lot of guys are telling people, oh, it's like unless you have – don't don't start something unless you have a co-founder. It's like, well, mm-hmm. that doesn't mm-hmm. – <laughs> Sure. Yeah, uh, you, you can definitely start. You know, there's all the foundation building, all that stuff. Um, you can, like, you can bring in somebody essentially at any point. It gets tougher and tougher. Like, even even if you're bringing in a COO, you know, uh, underneath the CEO or, or the founder or whatever the case may be. But to have somebody there from day one who shares the passion and, and shares sort of the vision with you, right? Um, it, it, it's much easier. Um, I'm not a like I, I just know myself that I would never do it again. With as, as a first-time founder, I would never do it again solo. Um, oh, okay. I, I, I would have found a co-founder from day one, but that's not to say that people can't do it. There's enough people, you know, who, who again are more than capable of, of going it on their own. Um, but yeah, for for me, that that's the one thing is is, and it's also something I, I look at, you know. When you ask me, what do I look for in entrepreneurs? Right. It's, it's definitely, it's definitely the team and, and who else is there, you know. Sure. So you want to meet everybody on the team? Uh, I'd like to. Sure. Okay. So do you find you just mentor people within Ottawa, or do you do you kind of spread out a little bit more? Um, you know what? I, it's it's sort of all over the place. Okay. Um, you know, I, I've sort of. How can we say it? You know, you, you, I got a call uh, probably three days ago um, from a gentleman in Atlanta, actually, Atlanta and North Carolina. Okay. He goes back and forth, um, you know, and, and it was sort of out of the blue and, and the notion of picking my brain and stuff. And, you know, he's got this really interesting social networking platform for, for the military, the U.S. military, and, and some of those that suffer from PTSD. So, you know, he found me, um, I don't know if it was LinkedIn or, or my About Me page, and, and sort of reached out. I thought what he was doing was extremely commendable, and I commended him on it, and he asked if he could chat. I said, sure, yeah, of course. Um, What's the site, so, just out of curiosity, if people want to check it out? Uh, I don't think he's up and running yet. He's oh, launching okay. soon, but okay. but it's called Dojo. Okay. Um, and it's going to be, yeah, it's, it's really, really cool, and I mean, it couldn't be more timely right now than and with what's going on, sort of, you know, all the veterans in the U.S. and, and what they're suffering through, and, and here in Canada, too. Yeah, exactly. So my hope is, my hope is they'll launch it here as well, and, and pretty pretty neat idea, good social. That is a really good idea. So mm-hmm. is there any other advice um, that you'd have for any other entrepreneurs? Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's probably... Go on all day? <laughs> Maybe we could go on all day. Yeah, just just minor things. Um, don't be afraid of strategic partnerships. Um, I'm, I'm Another thing I'm a huge proponent of, um, it, it's okay to do strategic partnerships, you know, especially with companies that are going to be able to, to boost your, you know, your offering and, and what you're doing. And, and if you can work it out in a way where it's mutually beneficial... You know, who knows? You could partner with a huge company. Essentially, they're pushing it out there for you. Right. Any, paying, hey, sorry? sorry? I was just going to say, any tips on how to get a strategic part, partnership? Reach out to them. Just reach um, out to them, and, email, it, LinkedIn. Well, it's funny. Yeah, it's funny because people tend to be afraid and and, and are even asking for help, right? Like, mm-hmm. these companies are, are, are open to the idea of collaboration. You know, and and they're grateful for the idea that you you may be able to offer them something that they need that could be a missing component um, that could bring them to the next level. And for the most part, it it literally is a matter of just reaching out. Like, don't make it a a pride thing or an ego thing that they may shoot you down. Who cares? Yeah, I think people forget about that is pretty much everything that I've ever got in my career, especially outside of you know, Edmonton and Canada even is I just asked, like I just literally yeah. sent somebody a tweet or a quick email 
or a message on LinkedIn saying, hey, are you looking for anybody else? And, yep. you know, there's times that you never hear back. And that's, sure. you know, sometimes that even, even 70, 80, let's say even 90% of the time. But all you need yep. is one person to say, sure, you let's chat. It. You know, that's you how got I got the it. radio show. I write for a tech yep. blog out of Los Angeles. That's how I got that. Yep. Just literally Twitter. And then yep. LinkedIn was the reason I got the radio show. So, yep. and I just asked for both of those. And I don't know why people are so scared. I, you know what? It, it blows my mind. And, and it, it's like it's nobody funny. knows if you don't, if you send 10 emails and nobody writes back to you. You don't have to yeah. tell anybody until somebody writes back to you, right? <laughs> yeah. Put, a, put Again, put away your ego, put away your pride. You know what? Just go out and get it done. Like, go out and, and just do it. Like, kill it. it, it it's okay. Like, nobody's laughing at you. Well, you yeah. Know? And, and especially in our ecosystem, we're all like, yeah, how'd you do that? Exactly. You know? People are more interested in kind of how you struggle to f- figure it out. And I think the other thing that I've learned recently in the last couple of years is everybody seems to read business books and, you know, they try to follow <laughs> somebody else's way to oh, get yeah. to the top. And you know what? Yeah. Take what you can from those. Sure, they're great. Like, I, I'm not trying yeah. to bash them. But yeah. the, the best advice I've ever heard is, like, you're on your own path. Like, you can't follow yeah. somebody else's path. You need to figure out, like, what you want. And you need to figure yeah. out how to get there. And it's like, yeah. my path will be different than your path and everybody else's here. You got it. You, you 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 nailed it. Like I, I can't tell you, and I'm sure you've heard this too, Kevin. Like how many times people are like, "Well, Anderson Horowitz says we we need to have this and this before we can do this," and and Facebook didn't do it that way, or or you know, I'm like, what? Yeah, who? I'm like like who? Like stop talking about that. Just do your thing. Like, yeah, exactly. It, it's such nonsense. Like you know what? And and I learned this from a very good friend of mine who who's uh, who's a former angel, the head of the angel network here in in, in Ottawa, who is phenomenal in, in telling me this. And and you know we walk around so often talking about you know hyping up our companies more or less. You know it, it is part of the the culture. Oh, for sure. Know, to, to to try to hype something up and 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 you know there's that. <laughs> the buzzword killing it you know we're killing it we're killing it we're killing it and it's like I, I, like we were killing it before we even launched and we really weren't killing it <laughs> you know? and and what impressed me and, and what he had to say was you know he's he's invested in, in some of these companies who you never hear about right you, you never hear them hyping you never hear anything but you know what when you when you find them and, and you start to learn about them they're killing it and they don't need to announce that they're killing it. You know, they're ki- they're killing it. <laughs> I also think that if you if you hype it so much and you get so much publicity, and yeah, yep. you, you probably grow like crazy and you're probably doing really well. But when mm-hmm. you're at the top, you can only go down. And if you kind of oh, never yeah. really hit this like pinnacle of you know hype or whatever, I don't even know what the term or even if it is there is a term for it. But if you hit yeah. that you can only go down right and people yeah but yeah. and i don't know if i'd ever want to be the most popular at anything right i'd rather be kind of just a little bit almost like above the radar popular enough but where people yep. where you're still relevant a decade later there's these things that get hyped and hyped yep. and hyped and then yep. six months later they're yeah you know nobody's talking about them and you can't even find them on the app stores anymore so I you got know. it you got it and again, I mean, it's like, you know what, like, and, and again, it was one of these lessons that I learned. It's like these days, like I, I've got another project I'm working on. It's like, it's completely under the radar. I'm not saying anything, you know, and, and I, and I actually love that notion sure. because it's quiet and it's like when it's ready, it'll get out there. And when it's out there, it'll, it'll do its thing. And, and you know what, you don't have to hype it. That, that'll, that'll come on its own. Right. Yeah. When you other know, people hype it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like yeah. what better? Well, that's, that's your word of mouth. You know, that's getting to your critical mass and critical mass is just talking about it and saying, wow, this is amazing. And you don't have to do anything. So you, I'm assuming you can't, you don't want to elaborate any more on that, but do you have a time frame <laughs> of when that's coming out? Uh, let's say, not really. we'll say, we'll say, we'll say, soon <laughs> soon um, yeah this, this one this one yeah soonish. uh super 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 excited about 
Uh, we think it's going to disrupt uh, just about everything, and, and it's for every founder and every startup, and, and it's finally going to unite the whole ecosystem, and, and we're super, super excited about it. Interesting. Um, we'll love to... When 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 we get closer, I'll, I'll make sure I'll, I'll spill the beans to you first. And sure. Who knows? Maybe we'll do another show because I think this one's going to help everybody. So. I was just going to say we should probably do another show when you're ready to launch or about to launch or just after you launch. You uh, let me know and we'll figure it out. Yeah, I would love to. I, I think when 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 I sort of spill the beans on it with you, and and I think you're going to be pretty pumped about it. I'm already I'm already excited to be honest with you. Yeah, it's an interesting yeah, well, space. Just the I I get that you basically didn't really tell me that much, but I c- yeah. maybe have an idea of what you're gonna do. And if I if you're doing that, I'm very excited about that. It's gonna change the game, right? So and and it's just gonna it's really exciting. Uh, and I don't know it it uh, it's long overdue and it's time and and yeah, super super excited about it. Well, George, this has been awesome, and I, you know, we're running out of time on the show, but I, I kind of want to just close with you kind of mentioning where people can find you online. For sure. Um, yeah, without a doubt, feel free to reach out to me anytime. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, George Borbeck. Um, just type it in. Uh, I'm, I'm on Clarity. Um, I don't know if you go and spend any time on Clarity, Kevin, but you should definitely, even yourself, try to get on there. Um, I have an account, down. but I don't use it ever, but I should. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know what? If, if, you know, anybody that's looking for mentor, mentorship, uh, advice, as much as I don't like to call it advice or even strategic planning, anything along those lines, you know, Clarity FM, you can reach out to me there. It's clarity.fm slash George Borbeck and about me, you know, another, another great page to sort of get some info and, and more than happy to chat with anybody. And, um, yeah. Yeah, this has been great. I really, really appreciate it. And yeah, I really, really appreciate having you on the show. And like I said, I'm happy that you agreed to do this so quick. I I really wanted to fit you in, and I bumped a couple people out of the slot so <laughs> I could uh, get you on because I I knew when we talked a couple of weeks ago that you'd make an awesome show, and I'm this was awesome. And you shared a lot of really good advice. And I'm excited to have you back on the show when you're ready to announce uh, your latest venture. For sure, and, and yeah, I really appreciate it. I mean, I think we're, we're founders and, and guests are, are only good as the host, and uh, you're one of the best, men. Thanks, man. Really appreciate it. Uh, I guess uh, we'll talk soon. Awesome. Have a Thank good you, one. Kevin. Okay, you too. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. You can visit past shows at buildingthefutureshow.com. If you're going to the Startup Expo on February 16th and 17th in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and want to record an episode, please contact me. The music for the show is by Electric Mantra. Check him out at electricmantra.com. Until next time, keep building the future.